All right. So these are Duroc L7s with 72 gram complex springs. Uh, it's lubed with 205G0 as well as film with TX Films, uh, GMK Bento, so we're using ABS Cherry Profile keycaps, as well as we're using the PE plate with no silicone insert between the plate and the PCB. Um, there's that piece of ESD protection foam at the bottom. It shouldn't do anything to dampen any sort of sound. It's very, very, very thin. Uh, and the, the case is aluminum. It's fully screwed in. All that kind of good jazz. Okay, here we go. Well, I'm taking off my ring just in case I smack it. Thank you so much for stopping by my YouTube channel. If you guys enjoyed the content you're about to watch today, please feel free, like, subscribe, drop me a follow, do whatever you guys need to do. I appreciate every single one of you. And if you want to catch me on any other platforms, all the links to everything is in the bio down below. Thank you again for stopping by. Enjoy the video. All right, so here's the Voice 65. Actually, let's take a look at the packaging first. So, pretty box. I mean, it's a box. Pretty, pretty neat no frills box over here. So I was given an instruction set too. Um, I read over it, I glanced over it. I am going to try doing as much as I can. I, I feel like it's a good opportunity for me to kind of like, okay, well, how easy is the build if you didn't have instructions? But I did gloss over it though. So probably retain some of that information. Oh, by the way, I took this out of the box. I don't know why I took this out of the box already, but um, this is like the gaskets and stuff like that. It's out of the box, I don't know why. All right, so these are these are for underneath the space bar. We're just gonna put these aside. These are silicone bits for underneath the space bar. Interesting, interesting, but we're just gonna move these to the side. We got a little instruction set here, which I mean, we can take a look at as well. All right. Nice stuff. These are our plates and PCBs. So we got hot swap PCBs. We will be taking a look at these. Um, to open one, let's just open one up now. I think one's already open. I think I did that already. Yeah, I'm pretty positive. So let's take one out. So we do have to break off the rails over here. So this is the PCB, the Voice 65 PCB. When you built the Portico, did it come with instructions and was it easy? I had just come off building the Karas. And it was similar in the point where it's actually the, the build's gonna be quite similar today where it has standoffs um which i don't know if we'll, we'll use the silicone in between just to see what it sounds like but this is the voice 65 pcb it is hot swap i do believe they come in a solderable version as well however we were given hot spot for this and we got some plates we're gonna take a look at that really quick too now I'm pretty positive. We have an aluminum plate as well as a polycarb plate. Let's see. I kind of want to ask you guys today. Now, I wasn't going to build with the poly plate, but what do you guys want to do? Do you guys want to do aluminum or do you guys want to do... There we go. What plate do you guys want to do? Aluminum or PE? <laughs> What do you guys want to do? PE? Why do you guys want to do PE? Sure. I think we do aluminum enough on this stream. Sorry, right, we already have that chosen out then. Let me move these down. Cool, cool. Now the keyboard. Now we did already unbox this once on stream, but we'll have it here again. Let me just move this stuff out of the way. So this has the silicone inside, which I don't think we'll be using today. Let's try skipping that and see what happens. And I do believe if you want to see a sound test with the with this inside of it, you can always go check out Andy. Now we have the beautiful weight on the back. Let's actually make sure it's not blown out here on the camera. See if I can just quickly adjust that. So I believe this is supposed to be modeled after one of those like mixer boards, you know? But it does have a knob on the side. 
I turned down some of the brightness, guys. Let me turn it back up. This has a vertical scroll wheel. Now, there's no notch. It, it, it is notched very slightly, but it's not accurate notches, if you guys are wondering. Uh, it does feel pretty good to move. It has a bit of a bump to it, so you guys can grip it. There's no clicking features as far as I'm concerned or aware. I've tried. There's nothing there. So there's no like mouse wheel three. I know some of you guys were asking about that. Uh, but no, it, it while it does have like a bit of a bump to it, so there, it just has some like tactility to it. I wouldn't say it's notched, but nor would I say it's like free spinning like the Logitech mice can be or whatever those are, right? Yeah, yeah, it's bumped, not notched. All right. The one thing I'm very excited for, though, is like the overall design of this is pretty nice. I'm not going to lie. Um, the RGB strips are really pretty. You know, the design of it is pretty nice as well. This is a side view. They're very pretty. I was actually a little concerned when I was told about this and I took a look at some of the screenshots. I had mostly seen like little close ups and I was like, oh, man, maybe this will be like really gamery with lots of creases and designs and all this, you know, embellishments to it. But actually, no, it's not. You can bop it, twist it and turn it. I never actually had one of those. I never had one of those growing up. What is the typing angle that I actually am not too sure. I believe it's Oof. you know what? Sorry, I got to ask Mr. Syrah in chat because I'm actually not too sure what the what the uh, typing angle is. I don't have that memorized. In all right. I have the PCB. So all in all, this should be pretty neat. Let's actually open up the case first. Just stuff out of the way. Let's open up our case first.
Okay. Here we go. Here is the build. Oh, I forgot the escape key. <laughs> I'm just gonna put this here. Here we go. All right. Here we go. Here's the board. This looks really pretty. Little bento on it. Fingerprints. My, my apologies, guys. I'll wipe it down later. All right. Let's plug it in. Let's make sure some of this works. So this is a right side USB-C. Interesting. I don't know if I particularly love that. This right now is adjusting volume. It does work. Okay, so it's not as... If you do it really quickly, it doesn't necessarily speed up things as much. It is step by two. But it's more like a... It's not clicking or anything like that. Okay, so interesting. Yeah, I, I agree. Maybe a center or left side. I think the right side USB-C has to be my only negative thing visually about this board. The RGB is quite nice here. Probably can turn that up too. LED changes with directions. Oh, look at that. Look at that, guys. It changes depending on... Cool. That's fucking cool. That's dope. And then it turns green, I guess, to let you know that you've changed it and back to RGB. Oh! That's cool. Interesting. LED could be a percentage bar for volume or something. That would also be because there's a lot of LEDs in here. That's really neat. Is this via compatible? I don't remember. Oh, I've been in here. See, this is exactly what perhaps we didn't depend on the V, which we're gonna now take a look if we did. We can bend a pin. We did. A little bent. We're gonna... Nice thing about hot swaps is you could literally do this. All right, put that back in. V is not working. Perfect. Actually, this feels pretty good. This feels pretty damn good. <clears throat> very, very nice. All right, let's give this a go. Let's give this a go. So these, I'm unplugging it so I don't feel like typing a bunch of random shit in my computer. Let's give this a sound test. Are they doing a soldered version? Yes, they are. It'd be nice if I can hear it too. It's hard to hear with the IEMs in. Ooh. You can definitely hear the PE plate. This is not quite as clacky as I thought it was going to be, but it's very nice. So when I mean clacky, I like... be higher pitch like this but that pe plate is probably doing something to it but i actually really dig this this, this is quite nice there's definitely some probably the desk mats as well This is the constellation up here. Let's get a little closer. Mm -hmm. 
guys can see this. You guys probably won't be able to see the flex, but there is some, and it is quite nice. However, if you guys wanted a more muted clacky sound, this PE plate and these are the same switches, just different springs. You want to know what I think the only row that seems hollow to me is this bottom row. But it only seems to be The corner of the case you guys can kind of does it sound hollow do you guys hear and it doesn't sound hollow here you know that's the only here sounds fine too This is the only area that seems quite hollow to me. It's just this little area over here for some weird reason. If you try tightening up the screw, maybe that's what's causing it to be a little hollow. Although I highly doubt that. No, it's already tightened up all the way. Give me back my screwdriver, please. All right, <clears throat> let me turn off these. No, it doesn't sound pingy at all. I mean, I can show you guys again. This is a very nice microphone to, to, to do these tests with. Do you guys hear hollowness? Hear them. This is a very uncolored microphone as well, so it's very flat in terms of its what it picks up. This side of the bottom row sounds great. It's it's this little corner of keys over here. I would venture even to say just these three keys here. That's really it. I think the rest of the board doesn't sound hollow at all. I would say it's a very far cry from hollow. The number row? Here, let's see something here. Oh, thank you, dude. The majority of the alphas I really like. I do agree, and Bessa, thank you so much for the, the prime. I do agree, the number row does sound a lot different from the alphas. Like the, I'd say your, your alphabet letters. And just these three keys here, I actually quite like the code and control over here, the alt and control on the right side. These sound great. Alphas are fire. Arrow keys sound fine. Tab, I really usually love the tab and caps lock key. I think those usually sound very good. And it's not a bad thing about the number row. It just sounds very different from the, the alphas. But actually, again, it's not like it's a bad different. What about the dampener? We did not use the dampener in this one here. If you want to see one with a dampener inside or the 
silicone mat in between the PCB and plate, uh, Andy would have a sound test on that. How did the far right page key sound with the artisans? Probably a shit. Actually not that bad. Actually not that bad at all. Uh, we did it to give you guys some variety in builds. If we just built it the same way, it'd be kind of boring. So we did it to do some variety because you can't build this without it. How does the LED strip look? All right, let me, let me unplug or change back here. Wait a second, chat. Okay. Guys, I actually quite like this. Like I said, there's some definite oddities. So my oddities would be... First of all, I really don't care for this USB-C placement. I, I really don't care for it. I think it's kind of weird on the right side. Is it a bad thing? No, because TKLs also have it there. So it's not like it's end of the world. Um, the right side, I'm going to open it up and see what I can figure out there. I just triggered Windows key. Um, I'm going to see why. Maybe I can see if there's any sort of like potential things that I can see there. Alphas sound great. Um, I actually don't even mind the number keys. The arrow keys sound good. Modifiers sound fine. They do. The modifiers aren't as clacky or loud as I normally prefer, and that might be because of the plate. So I'm probably going to be doing a rebuild of this sometime in the next week um, with the aluminum plate, because I wouldn't mind actually trying this with the aluminum plate with no silicone mat in between. Here's my thing. I don't think every keyboard needs those silicone mounts or whatever you want to call them, the silicone sheets in between the PCB and plate. I really don't think they need them. Um, the reason why I, I don't think every keyboard needs it is because sometimes the acoustics of the board can carry through and be very, very nice. Um, if that's a, the designer's choice to have it in there, then so be it. I just think in this case here, this sounds pretty good. Um, and having heard with it as well, I don't know if it's enough of a difference to be like, yeah, that's a game changer. Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't know if it's a game changer for me it's, or, you know, a fix that needed to be implemented. I think this is great the way it is. This is not a bad little kit for 330. I like it. Thank you again. If you guys want more information, this is the Voice 65. I'll post some, I'll post, post, oh boy, can't speak. I'll post some links in my Discord. If you guys want to join the Discord, it's exclamation point Discord. Uh, we'll post that. I'll take some photos of it as well in the next upcoming week. Um, I think we'll also do a quick build stream. Toit. Yeah, I know. We'll do a quick build stream of this again later this week, maybe with some different switches, or maybe I'll just take out these switches and rebuild it all with the aluminum plate. Maybe we'll do the exact same thing and then we'll do like a compare. We'll go back and listen to it and do all that stuff. The blocker is a great size. Not a lot of people like smaller blockers, but I quite like this. This is nice. Why do you, uh, why do you, why do you use the dial on the Voice 65 for, or what do I use it for? I use it for volume. So this, there's actually a lot to this keyboard I didn't know. Um, so for example, I didn't, I didn't know this, but you can actually use this. Let me show you guys this, actually. This is really freaking cool. Let me show you guys this. So this is going to boot up. Now, if I want to, I can actually set the lights back on for everything, right? Now, if I actually set this, I believe it's to blue. No, it's the red. If you set this to the red color, now this dial will actually adjust the backlighting bright brightness. See that? And that's your backlighting brightness. Look at that. So now you have no backlight. And this is just done by hitting function up and now you can set it to that and now you can do volume. And this gives an indicator to which way you're scrolling. The other thing you can do too is when you switch to blue, this is actually the brightness for the side. So if you really just want to do this on the fly, you can do that. It gives you the brightness there. And again, we'll go back to the green, which is going to be the volume control. I don't know. I thought this was cool. Let's open this up.
Dude, it's crazy how much support you guys give me. I had the sweetest compliment slash criticism this morning on a YouTube video, and it was, Hey Alex, we really like your condensed videos, and I think this is what a lot of people want it, but we feel like you should put your personality more in the condensed video. And I was like, thank you guys. Always watching? Thanks, man. I appreciate you guys. Okay, I'm going to show you guys what this sounds like now, because I think this already sounds a million times better. So this is with a rubber light. Uh, the sizing, if you guys want this for your own sake, it is uh, 0.125 inches by 12 by 12. So the thickness is 0.125. All right, so this, this is what this is. It's rubber light incorporated. I can't remember the durometer of this. I'll find out tonight. Um, and let's figure out what this sounds like now. So this is now the Voice 65, where if you guys watched the stream yesterday, you might have noticed some oddities with it. Still a tater hater? Come on. Like, that already sounds a million times better. Remember these being hollow? Yeah, so this was really hollow. If you guys remember, this was really hollow yesterday over here. The rest of the keyboard was fine. It was just this one area. Ooh, the alphas sound really good. 